guys, Marilla Steele here from Fashion Steel NYC and welcome back to my channel. Do not forget to give your girl a thumbs up and subscribe if you love fashion, beauty, lifestyle, and travel videos. All right guys, I have a fun, chatty, get ready with me today. I am showing you how I get my slick back bun ponytail i am doing this full makeup look i am showing you and taking you guys shopping with me to buy this outfit i got so many questions about these shredded pants about these earrings about this top that i wore on memorial day so i'm gonna give you guys all of the tea i asked you guys for a few questions i'm letting you know how much i make from youtube some of my upcoming goals just details about my next moves and how to build confidence and all of those things so if you are interested in seeing this makeup look learning more about this little look that I wore on Memorial Day seeing how I get my hair this way just keep on watching and remember links to everything can be found down below in the description box all of the hair products all of the makeup products all of my outfit products and details are right down there so yeah make sure you check out those links as well we will start with this hair y'all all right guys so let's get into how i got this slick back bun i get asked this so much i would say that my hair is maybe 4c 4b my curls are extremely defined if i just let my hair out it is a full afro you can see how my hair looks after i take this out it's very kind of dry and kind of stiff and like needs some serious help when it comes time for me to wash this style out currently i'm using the eden body works coconut shea peppermint tree <laughs> clarifying shampoo and detangling conditioner i love the clarifying shampoo because it gets all of the like muck and yuck and dirt and build up out of my hair really cleans it all the way down to the root and then the detangling conditioner is one of the best conditioners i've ever used if you have natural hair you need to be using a lot of conditioner when you detangle i know some people just want to use a little bit and then you end up really just damaging your hair trying to like comb it out you need to use like a lot also have a special wide tooth comb that i use it's like this white comb with built-in like coconut butter it's very slippery very soft i take a section of hair start at the bottom work my way up to the top i have no problems detangling my hair with this in fact it it takes me maybe less than five minutes to do it while in the shower but i also love just how my curls are just popping tint very defined after using this and then my scalp just feels clean because of that tea tree which is good at helping with any kind of bacteria and build up on your scalp i wash my hair once a week now <laughs> after i wash my hair i go ahead and pretty much part it down the middle if i'm doing like a twist out i will also use the eden body works coconut shade leave-in conditioner and this is one of my favorite conditioners because this really brings out your curls it makes your curls so defined and it also lengthens your hair you guys know we get a lot of shrinkage with natural hair so that helps a lot but normally i will just take a ton of eco styling gel this is the product that is going to get your natural hair to lay down you guys see how my hair kind of looks after i wash it it's kind of big it's standing up but while it's still wet I section my hair from the back. I start in the back. I put a huge clump of this and I wipe it through my hair from the root to the ends. And then you can kind of see like my curl pattern really comes out. Literally, I could just let, put this all over my hair and let it air dry and it would create a really cute, like almost like a wash and go style. And then I do the middle and I have a part here. I do the right side, I do the left side. Literally, literally just going through, wiping this all through my hair from the roots to the tips. And I really love that this actually protects your hair. Even though it's gel, it does have argon oil in it, which is wonderful for your hair it repairs it conditions it defines it smooths it shines you can get this at your local beauty supply store sally's target it works amazing once it's all over my hair i take a nice boar bristle brush with that's kind of soft and i just literally slick this down i slick that down i slick that down in the back and i put it in a ponytail and because my hair is already wet it's very easy to do and once it's down i just take a little wrap 
and I put it in a little ponytail. I leave my hair out and I take a little bit of this olive oil, but you can really use any kind of oil that helps with hair breakage. And I put it right here in my part. If you wear this style long enough, especially if you do a center part, your hair will start to break. It's just natural. Um, so every now and then I'll switch parts. I'll put one on the left, one on the right, or one in the middle. And I also use a little bit of this olive oil from Hollywood Beauty just to help with hair breakage and also add shine and protect from the heat. After that, I just take a little head wrap. I just tie it on. And literally I just go to sleep. I wake up the next day, I take a little bit of this Taraji P. Henson, I love her hairline by the way, curls for days, moisture rich curl cream, and I literally just saturate my ponytail and then I two strand twist it and tuck it back into the, ha the hair wrap just to create a little ball like this and so this is how i get my slick back look it works better if you let it dry overnight even better if you actually do this in the morning because by the nighttime it will be dry you can take the head wrap off and it will lay down like this and it will stay like this until you literally wash it out so i will make sure to link all of the products that i use for my slick back bun down below in the description box you guys can check them out. Just remember that when you're slicking down natural hair, you need to use a lot. Sometimes I'll use half of this, y'all. So much, so, so much. That's the key. The key is to use a lot. A lot of people try to just use a little bit. That's not gonna work. You need a lot, especially if you have 4C hair. So now that I've given you all the details on how I get my slick back bun, let's get into my everyday makeup. So this is my bare skin. We're gonna take a little bit of the La Mer, the treatment lotion, I love this. Just to give my face a little moisture. I just put a little there. Now for this, they say you should just gently pat it into your skin. I mean, it feels very bougie and rich. I love the way this stuff smells, by the way. It smells so good. And then I'm gonna take some Unseen sunscreen SPF 40 by super goop. It's clear and then I'm gonna massage that into my face I've gotten a few rogue comments about wearing sunscreen as a black woman and it just baffles me How some people don't Believe in science black people get skin cancer too and in fact we usually get it in the weirdest places that you would never look in our scalp behind the ears in the ears Sometimes I think even like in the eyes, which is why you need to wear <laughs> sunglasses. I mean, it's very strange in your nails. If you have spots in your nails, if you see like different moles and things like that, you definitely want to get those checked out. But remember black does crack. Now we do have some exceptionally wonderful skin that can tolerate nearly everything, but the sun is the sun and the sun be sunning. And if you want to not crack sunscreen, is where it's at. Also, if you're using any kind of products that help with hyperpigmentation, such as retinols, vitamin C's, or any of those kind of serums and things, those things don't react well with sunlight. They make it worse. So you have to use some kind of sunscreen to protect your skin. That's my spiel on sunscreen. Please wear it every single day. Love me. So that's the base. And now we're gonna start with my makeup and I'm gonna answer a few of these questions. By the way, I'm not naked. I am wearing <laughs> super old tube dress from Naked Wardrobe. I have a ton of tube dresses that I love. I'll link a few of my favorites down below that are super affordable. So my base is already on. I'm going to start with a little NARS Sheer Glow in the color Maceo. This is like my summer color. It's like the darker color. <laughs> so I'm just putting this on this foundation brush and then I just go ahead and put it on. All right, so let's get into some of these questions while I get this foundation together. One of the first questions I got is, would I practice physical therapy Again, if you're new to my channel, I have a doctorate degree in physical therapy and I practiced physical therapy for 10 years. I helped to open up two clinics in New York City, in Manhattan, and at my last place, I was the director there for nearly three years. And that was before I became a full-time 
content creator. I do still have my license. I have my license in New York State. I also now have my license in Florida. I don't foresee me practicing any time in the near future. I am using the Sephora Brow Pencil in the color Granite. I love that it has this little, what is this thing called? A spoolie. So what I'm doing is I'm just combing my brows up on one end. I'm gonna take the other end, which is a retractable brow pencil in more of a dark brown. I'm gonna clean up my brows. Now this is hard for me to look into the viewfinder and do, so I'm gonna do it into my mirror, but I'll move it over so you guys can kinda see exactly what I'm doing. So I just go along my actual brow line and I do up strokes because I like my brows to look thick. And I just kind of fill them in in the places that need filling in. I don't get my brows like waxed or anything like that. So now I'm just gonna draw in kind of the bottom. And I just go along my natural brow line, just like that. I go a little harder towards the end and stay kind of light towards the front. So it just looks a little more natural. And literally that's it, like wow! It looks really dark on camera, but it's really not that dark in real life. So then I take the spoolie and I just go in and kind of brush everything up so that it looks a little more natural. Someone asked if I am happier in Miami. I wouldn't say I'm happier. I think I'm the same amount of happy. I would say I'm a lot less stressed in Miami. I feel like my quality of life in Miami is better than it was in New York. I feel like I actually take time to rest and relax and like take better care of myself. New York is a really a hustless town and I love that about New York. But after a while, it could just be a lot to always kind of feel like you have to be on and doing something and accomplishing something. Whereas I feel like in Florida, leisure and having a fun life filled with, you know, leisure and the things that you love comes first before a job. I could be wrong in that, but that's what it seems like to me. Okay, I feel like the right eyebrow looks better. But that's okay. So now I, I, I outline my eyebrows with the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Long Wear Concealer. So again, I just go along the bottom line that I kind of drew in just to kind of clean them up a bit. And then again, towards like the middle, I'll clean that up too. I don't have to go really along the whole brow just along the pointy part in the middle. I take this little spongy thing and then what I do is I pull it down onto my eyelid to make a nice neutral eyelid that's gonna hold my eyeshadow. And then I just tap this in. And this is how I make my eyeshadow stay on. I mean, you can use eyeshadow primer as well. That's my brows. I've linked everything down below for you guys. All right, so let's get into the next question while I put on my eyeshadow. I use the same eyeshadow, y'all. It's Urban Decay On The Run G-Train Palette, and my favorite color is like this red brick color, which is called Tunnel. Again, this is just my everyday makeup. This is what I use on a regular basis if I'm not like doing something or going anywhere, like an event or something, and I'm just using this little brush to apply. So the next question is, how much money can you make as a YouTuber with your amount of following? I have about 45, maybe a little over 45,000 subscribers. I'll pop up on the screen what I made last month from AdSense. Just with using the ads running on my YouTube videos for the month of May 2021, I made a little over $5,000, that is about average for me to make from AdSense. 
every month from YouTube. Now this doesn't include what I make from partnerships. All of my videos that are sponsored or that I partner with brands with throughout the month, which is usually about half of the videos that I do every month. From that, I can make anywhere from 20 to $35,000 a month from monthly partnerships. I'll make a good amount of money from YouTube, so I'm not going nowhere. I'll be right here every Sunday and Wednesday. So what I do is literally I just throw this on my eyelids and then I use my finger to kind of smudge it in to kind of blend it well. I don't use anything else other than my finger. And then I will also go along my lower lashes with a little of this too, just kind of on the outside of my eyelid and kind of pat it in. So I like it to look really natural. I know a lot of people don't like the dark eyeshadow. That won't ever deter me from <laughs> wearing it. And then I just take that same makeup brush that I use and I clean it up. So as you can see there, it's like bleeding. I'll go in and literally just wipe the excess off so that it looks a lot more clean. Let's get into the next question while I do my mascara. Someone asked, how do you deal with people who mistreat you because they think you're bougie? Honestly, no one has ever treated me like any kind of way or, or have called me bougie. I'm not the bougie one. If anything, people will say I'm unkept, rough around the edges, maybe a little hood. That's all fine. Like I was born and raised in the hood. I claim the hood. The hood is a part of me and I would never like downplay that or down talk that. That's how I was raised. I was raised by my whole community, by everybody in my project and I wouldn't have had it any other way. I really enjoy my childhood. I have had a few comments about like how I spend my money on like luxury things and I should be buying other things or I should be getting my face fixed or getting my teeth fixed with that money. And to those people, I just say, it's my money though. Like why are you, why are you focused on how I'm spending my money? Like maybe you should spend time making some of your own and then you wouldn't have to pretend about what you would do with the money that I'm making. All of my bills are paid. A lot of people would be like, oh like, you don't even own a house. I have two apartments and a, a mortgage that I'm paying at, the, at, at this time. So now that argument is mute. I do get the teeth comment a lot and it used to bother me, but now I just know that it's projection. People want perfection and they want to kind of throw on you what they would do in your circumstances, but they're not in your your circumstances. They're, they most likely don't have a YouTube channel. They're not putting their life out there for the world to see. They're hiding behind an anonymous profile, usually one without a picture. My teeth have been like this for a really long time. And when I was a teenager, I went with my parents to the dentist. They did x-rays and all kinds of things to kind of figure out, you know, if I was gonna get braces because I actually did pageants. When I was a teen, I won a few. That was a big thing with in the pageant community. It was something that I was kind of teased for about, more about my gap, not so much about like my open bite or my overbite. But if you've watched this channel long enough, you guys know my jaw is not properly aligned. I was born that way. When I went to the dentist, when I was maybe 14, 13 or 14, and we were kind of trying to figure out what we were gonna do with braces, that's when I was informed that my jaw is malformed. And in order to fix that, I would have to have my jaw broken, reset and have my jaw wired shut for two months and be on a liquid diet. And then after that, I would have to wait for it to like fully heal for about two more months before I could even consider getting braces, getting veneers, getting anything. And also, that was not covered by insurance at the time because it was deemed cosmetic and would cost over a hundred thousand dollars including my hospital bills <laughs> and so when i found out all of this my parents looked at me and were like and i was like you know what i can live with it i'm never gonna go through that kind of pain just to be perfect for any of you I'm sorry, I'm just not. I took my $100,000 and I bought a house. Now that I've addressed that, 
I use the Their Real Benefits Cosmetics Mascara. Look at that. That's my lashes. This stuff is amazing, y'all. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite. Well, one of like my top three favorite mascaras. And of course, I also always do. Well, I forgot this one. But can you see? I did the bottom lashes on this one. I haven't done the bottom lashes on this one yet. But I love the way this little spoolie is because it's pointed at the end. So you can really get your little baby Bambi lashes. Bottom lashes is like where it's at, to be quite honest. So for my eyeliner, I'm using the Giorgio Armani Smooth Silk Eye Pencil. I did a collab with them, but I love this eyeliner. It's very, very black, and also it stays on all day, no matter how much I blink. <laughs> so that's it. That's all I do for my eyes. I will link all of the eye things down below. That On The Run eyeshadow palette, it sells out. I think it's on his last leg. I'm not even sure if they are gonna make this anymore, but it does have some beautiful colors in there. If I can find it online, I will link it. Now I'm gonna do a little contour. I'm going to use Minted, which is a black owned business bronzer. It is a bronzer, but I use it for contouring and I use the color Yacht Life, which is very good. And then I'm using this e.l.f. contouring brush. Let me find another question. How do you have confidence in revealing clothing? I love being free, but I get self-conscious. So I've always kind of been confident and I don't mean that in like trying to be like boasting or anything. I just, my parents really instilled in me that I'm that like ever since I was little, they were like, wow, you're amazing, you're smart, you're beautiful, you're talented. And they always told me that that plays a part in it too, because if you have high self-esteem, you don't really care too much what people think about you or what people say about you. It's a little different once you get an audience like on a platform like YouTube because honestly human beings are not meant to withstand the kind of criticism that we have today you would never hear from 5,000 people who hate your teeth because you just wouldn't be exposed to that many people in the past but because of technology the pressure to be perfect is just y'all see what it got people doing i mean y'all see it times have changed like during my day people weren't doing all of this stuff to be considered beautiful and that's no shade i know a lot of people just do things because it makes them happy and by all means do whatever i'm talking to all y'all do whatever makes you happy your body is yours you can do whatever you want with it you can wear whatever you want on it but it is it's it's a muscle it's a muscle being confident. You have to practice it. And practice makes perfect. And if you don't feel confident, you kind of just have to fake it until you are confident. Life is so short. It's a lot of people out here living like we get to live forever or like we get to do it again. And that's not the case. I feel like if 2020 taught us anything is that we could die at any moment. The human body is so fragile. Life is so precious who gives a f <laughs> what someone has to say about what you're wearing how you look f that person do whatever you want because when you're old and gray hopefully you get to live long enough to be old and gray you're not gonna give a f about what somebody said about what you had on you're not even gonna be thinking about that you're not gonna care it's not gonna matter and also it's a it's a matter of just getting older as well and just knowing better i feel like the older i got the more i cared less about what any body had to say about me anybody i know about me i know my heart i know my spirit i know my kindness i know the kind of person i am and can nobody take that from me unless i let them so now i'm going to take a little bit of the fenty beauty matchstick and espresso and i'm going to contour my nose this works great as well as a contour but this breaks me out i can only use it on my nose i don't contour my nose a lot just a little bit and that's it and i don't even feel like it made that big a difference did y'all so then i take a little bit of this hd flawless setting powder in golden banana I got this at like a beauty supply store for like next to nothing. This is what it looks like. I just take a little, put it on this blush brush and go along my nose, go along where I'm definitely gonna 
get some shine, which is under my cheeks, the tip of my nose, my forehead, and maybe even a little on my chin. You can see that that just mattified everything. That's it for that. I am now going to put on some blush. My blush is the NARS Wanted 2 palette. I love this palette. I always use a mixture of this and this. Dab it into there, a little bit there. Then I just smile. My cheeks are very round, so it makes it pretty easy. And it just wakes up your face. It's like, ooh. I'm awake. So the next question is, what is my process for sourcing unique pieces to add to my wardrobe? I find immense joy in scouring the internet for clothes. Like, you know how some people, you know, they like to binge watch TV shows. I like to binge, binge like search and shop. One of the main things I love doing is finding vintage things like vintage Roberto Cavalli or Jean-Paul Gaultier. Just very new up and coming designers like Jacquemus or Attico. For like vintage pieces I go on the real real because it's very easy to find and it's always very easy to find for the low low. Places like Tradez, Vestiaire Collective, Ukes. Ukes is a really good place to find out of season designer things that have since kind of, you can't really find it anywhere else. For new and up and coming designers, I always check Farfetch New In. I check it at least once a day because this is how I find out about new designers and new pieces kind of before anyone else gets them. I will actually link a f just a few of my favorite places to shop down below in the description box if you're looking for very kind of over the top avant-garde definitely head to Farfetch New Inn. Instagram is a great place to find like small indie brands especially when it comes to black owned businesses. I get a lot of my very kind of avant-garde one-of-a-kind pieces from black designers like Fina Well, Hanifa, Christopher John Rogers. Those are like my three favorite when it comes to black designers. You got to be out there and you got to be looking. So I'm going to do a little bit of a highlight. I'm going to use the Sephora Trio Face Palette. In Power is the name of it. And I'm going to use my fan powder brush and I'm just going to dip it just a touch in this golden color and go under, I mean, it's so subtle, like you can barely even, but it makes a difference. Can you do? I put a little bit on my nose if I want to be extra. I'll put a little bit on my Cupid's bow. I might do a little here and a little there. I'll link this down below. This is good too. I love this blush as well. This is a good little combo to have and it's pretty affordable from Sephora. This brush, by the way, is from Laura Mercier and it is everything. I'll link the brush down below as well. For the lip, I'm going with Fenty Beauty Unveil. It's a beautiful liquid matte brown. And I feel like I can control the brush well so that it actually looks nice. Another question is, what is the next big goal you want to accomplish. So one of my main goals is to make a million dollars this year. I'm on my way. I wrote a blog post last year that that was going to be one of my goals for this year. And it's just a personal thing. It's not about just having money. It's just about seeing if I can actually do it. Doing it really myself. Once I do that, I'm going to make a new goal to make too. And I think a lot of that comes with me coming from very humble beginnings. and just being able to afford my family anything they need. And that's the kind of like generational wealth I want to have so that I can provide whatever my family needs. My family will, as long as I'm walking this earth and I'm able to make money, my family will never want for anything. And so I'm also going to do that by investing in real estate. You all know I just bought my first property here and I say I just bought my first property because I do plan on buying multiple properties 
and that's one of the ways I want to create generational wealth for me and for my family. I'm already actually looking. <laughs> I need to chill. Like I need to get in my house first, but like my brain is always going, going, going. And I'm already kind of starting to look into more investment properties, especially here in Miami because it's so hot right now. And also because I have the capital to be able to do it at this point in time. So we only going up from here. So that's one of my goals. I'm probably going to make that goal. If not a million, I will make very, very close to a million dollars this year. Just doing influencing um, and having all of my forms of income. I already kind of broke down what I do with YouTube and how I make money that way. I also do brand partnerships outside of YouTube for Instagram, for TikTok. Um, sometimes I create content for brands that I don't even have to post just for them, photos for them. I have my own eBooks. I have my own teachable course teaching other people how to get paid as an influencer, as a blogger. I also have my clothing line twice yearly. And what else do I do? I mean, I... <laughs> okay, I'm gonna answer one more question and then we're going to get into the outfit of the day because this video is gonna be extremely long. What would you tell a new YouTuber what not to do when first starting? I'm not the type of person to tell someone what not to do. I feel like you should do whatever you wanna do. But if you're actually looking to grow and to grow quickly, I would suggest starting with informative videos, how to do this, how to wear that, how to create a makeup look, just how to videos that inform and teach people. Those drive people to your channel first so that they can then kind of figure out who you are versus starting with vlogs because no one cares who you are. <laughs> no one cares who you are when you're first starting out. They have to kind of build that relationship. I pretty much did it the other way around. I started with vlogs like thinking, oh, people are just gonna love me. Like people don't care about you, girl. They don't care about you until they kind of know that you have something worth saying that you're able to teach that you're able to show them something you're able to teach them something the good thing for me is that vlogs make the most money people who do like you and like your personality they will watch an entire video they will sit through the ads and they will engage and they will be so loyal and so loving that they watch everything they expect your videos and so because vlogs are usually long and people watch them longer they make more money than just a sit down 10 minute informative video it doesn't matter if a hundred thousand people watch a video that's 10 minutes long versus 20,000 people that watch a video that's an hour long the video that's an hour long that 20,000 people watch is going to make more money than the video uh that a hundred thousand people watch that's only 10 minutes now that i've answered some of your most asked questions i've given you all the tea on me and also have shown you guys how i get this makeup look let's get into my outfit of the day this is one of my most liked pictures ever on instagram i took it with my iphone my girl bella rosa blog we went to nikki beach here in miami beach and we took these photos i saw this set actually maybe a month or two ago um, at an event at showfield so let's go ahead and get into shopping for this look i'm going to take you all with me to showfields miami showfields miami is a really cool store it's often called the greatest store on earth or something like that i think is their model it has all of these different little compartments the one here in miami beach has a juice bar that i think is right now collaborating with yes jewels i've actually seen her there it doesn't cost to go inside it's really cool in there they have all of these different little areas where small brands and businesses can have like little corners and they have their own little booths they carry everything from like jewelry to dog food to even cbd products for like dogs with anxiety they have home decor in there they have bathing suits they have knickknacks they have um hats they have a, a hat stand as well a lot of times they have events in there and they partner with designers or they partner with artists to kind of show their work off they also have a slide in there where you can slide from the second floor onto the first floor 
I'm not sure if you all have ever watched my New York City vlogs, but there's also a show fields in New York City. But that one is maybe about four stories high and you can slide from I think the third floor to the first floor. So if you're interested in finding new and upcoming brands, very like small boutique businesses, things that you're not going to find anywhere else, check out the show fields here on Lincoln Road in Miami Beach or head to the one in New York City that is in Soho. I will link both down below. So while I was there a few weeks ago, I actually saw this brand and I saw these clothes, but it was for an event and so the clothing rooms were closed so I had to go back the next day or actually a few weeks later to buy this piece that I wore for Memorial Day. This piece is from the brand Thrifts and Threads and they have a booth here at Miami Beach Showfields. I don't know how long they're gonna have a booth but they do get new stock in every now and then they do have an online store i will link it down below in the description box so you guys can check it out that's where i first saw this two-piece shredded set oh my god they had so many different kinds you guys they had brown they had white they had yellow they had dresses they had cover-ups they had little skirts and all of these little shredded yarn like materials that I think are made in Mexico. You guys, look at this top. It's too good. So literally it's just two long strands of fabric wrapped around this string. And this is the top. And at the bottom, it has these little strings as well. So the thing about this top is that it can be tied so many different ways is not even funny. You guys know how I feel about something that is multi-purpose and multi-use. This is their Alaya top and they have a little picture that comes with it that kind of shows you all of the different ways that you can tie this top. Currently this way and this way is my favorite. This is kind of the way that I wore it recently in my Instagram post. Now these tops are pretty expensive. The top by itself is $150 and it's well worth it y'all. Now the pants are really like the showstopper here. Like everybody wanted to know about the pants, but it is a set. You can buy them separate or you can buy them both and wear them together the way it's kind of meant to be worn. And these pants are just literally everything. I'm gonna wear them every chance I get <laughs> this summer. So it is shredded in the front and in the back. On the sides, it has that shredded yarn as well. Up around the waist, it has a tie here. So you tie that very tight. It has two little ties on the side, on each side. And literally you have to step into these pants now, yes. Because they are shredded, it's very hard to put these pants on, y'all. It's gonna take you fail. This is how I do it. I put my hand in. And then I just go along the seam on the side, just like this, until I'm all the way down at the bottom, like that. And then I just open it and put my foot through. That, that's the easiest way to do it, trust and believe. I mean, if you're a little squeamish about your booty being out, I would just wear this with a swimsuit bottom or a flesh toned pair of underwear. Really, it doesn't show a lot. Like, yeah, your cheeks might be out, but you won't see the cheeks that much. I got the, the medium in these pants because they are long. The small was actually quite short on me and I'm five foot six inches tall. They are quite long, they do hang quite a bit down at the bottom. A nice tall shoe is preferable and that shoe that I went with are these. Aren't they stunning? I got these from Ukes. Like I was just saying you guys, Ukes is one of my favorite places to shop. These are the, I know I'm gonna mispronounce this, the car, Tenair, made in Spain. They kind of specialize in like these raffia type of platforms. Also, they do a lot of espadrilles. I feel like this brand is known for espadrilles. These are super high, very retro, pretty comfortable though. I can walk around all day in them. I will link these down below because they do still have these at Uke. So if you're looking for a really cute summer shoe, 
that's gonna give you some height it's gonna give you that platform feel that 80s feel that's so popular right now definitely check these out yes absolutely loving this look i went ahead and changed into it for you guys the pants by themselves are 245 dollars so if you want the entire set it's gonna cost you it's gonna cost you 395 dollars almost 400 dollars so it ain't cheap but it's cute and you will cause a scene. They have less revealing pieces as well. Like I said, they have like a little wrap skirt. They have like a long dress that's kind of like a cover up. They have a lot of different pieces. So definitely check out Thrifts and Threads. I will link them down below. They also have an Instagram and you guys can definitely check them out. For my earrings, I am going to go with Let's actually go over here. So you all know I love a good statement earring and this was the perfect occasion to wear these little earrings from Andrea Iyama, which is a black owned business. I absolutely love these earrings. If they are still available, I will link them down below. I just think that they went so well with the decor at Nikki Beach, kind of mirroring the lamps. These are everything for vacation. So let's go ahead and pop these on. Uh, one of the best buys of, when did I buy these? I've had these for a while. I think I've got them in 2019 maybe. Oh, they're so good. They're a moment. Okay, and for today's fragrance, because I'm feeling very tropical, I'm feeling very black queen, I'm gonna go with Barreto Ball Da Freak which is one of my all time favorite scents. I think I described this scent. Boop, 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 boop. Barreto, Ball Da Freak. It is the best smelling perfume in the world. Oh my God. Ah! It smells like a warm summer night, wrapped in spices and vanillas somewhere in like somewhere in Africa somewhere like real black somewhere like I don't know Lagos somewhere in Ghana oh I'm telling you there are some gems in my old videos like if you're not watching my old videos you're missing out and also you can kind of see my evolution and my growth as a youtuber over the last kind of two years of being consistent but you guys this stuff smells amazing oh it smells so good I love it all right, that is everything. That is my get ready with me, how I got my slick back bun, how I do my everyday makeup look, how I got this look from Showfields, from Thrifts and Threads, the earring, the scent, and also answering a few of you all's questions. Special thanks to everyone who submitted a question. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you all for riding this ride with me. I'm almost to 50K. I cannot believe it. Please do share my videos with your friends and your family. Please do remember to always give my video a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know to show my videos to other people so I can get more eyes on my channel and I can grow and grow and grow and accomplish some of these goals that I was telling you guys about. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. You're such, <sighs> y'all are everything. So thank you guys. If you like videos like this and you want me to do more of them, let me know down in the comments. All right guys, so thanks so much for watching. I have linked everything down below for you all and I will see you all in the next one. Do not forget to give your girl a thumbs up. If you watched this whole video, you enjoyed it. So you might as well give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe because I do a lot of fashion. I do a lot of home decor. I do a lot of vlogs and travel and I don't want you to miss it. Subscribe, click the notification bell so that you never miss a video. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys.